The log cabin is a traditional quilt pattern that plays with light and shadow surrounding a red centre that is associated with hearth, home and heart. This was the inspiration for our digital exhibition, which is a kind of log cabin, a home for our collaboration. The log cabin is a tool for artistic development, as well as a platform for thinking through what it means to craft in digital space and make queer kinships when we are apart. Separated by distance, the digital log cabin gives us a space to patchwork our practices together, documenting the new connections and intimacies leading to new ideas and collaborations. We are interested in how to make a digital exhibition less static, less of a compromise or consolation prize, and into a living and useful space. And also thinking how the binary thinking of digital physical could be undone, or how material practices could interplay and interweave in digital space. Rather than the digital as a restriction, it becomes an expansive tool for imagining new works and possibilities. The log cabin quilt is potentially ever increasing. Its borders can grow to accumulate beyond project timelines and production schedules. We will continue to use the log cabin after the project as a functional tool rather than a static legacy. New projects are already starting to sprout rhizomatically from the project's digital hearth. Hi, my name is Sarah Joy Ford. I'm an artist working with textiles based in Manchester. I'm currently doing my practice-based PhD at Manchester School of Art with my supervisor, Alice Kettle. My practice at the moment is really centred around working with lesbian archives in Britain seeing how the quilt specifically can be an effective model for revisioning lesbian archival material that hasn't been seen or been given the attention it should have done. Pulling these bits and pieces out of the archive and patchworking them back together through my court practice and then setting them off out into the world again as quilts. I've pretty much always worked with textiles and this PhD has really given me the chance to push and explore what it means to be making quilts and what it means to be working with archives and lesbian and queer culture. I'm very different to Jordan in my practice. I'm very pernickety and slow and everything is highly calculated and planned, which is why it's so brilliant to work with Jordan and we've we have a completely opposite approach to making work. It's really great that we can come together and influence each other because we seem quite similar in that we both love textiles and come from a print background. In fact, I started off printmaking at university on a fine art course at the University of Leeds and then studying printmaking in Budapest at the University of Fine Arts for a year. After my year there, I decided I didn't want to ever touch wet things again, but still was completely committed to making textiles. So we've both got a real fascination with print as well, as well as which is an important part of our collaboration. I'm Jordan Taylor. I'm currently collaborating with Sarah Joy Ford on the Log Cabin project. My practice is also predominantly textile based, and I also studied printmaking at university. But since then, my passion has definitely moved towards woven and knitted textiles. I use a lot of crochet, which can be quite fun. One minute it's craft, the next fashion, then perhaps ends up being something more sculptural. Any, anything's possible. A lot of my practice isn't planned. The freedom in this approach tends to work well. Sometimes it comes out of trying to stay off my phone, or it might come out of making use of redundant time like commuting. Crafting is really important in my work. The idea that I can make things myself and then use my body as a platform to project them always feels quick and exciting. Collaboration also plays a massive role in how I create things. Creating new worlds and pieces of art collaboratively feeds my practice in a healthy way and helps me escape my own echo chamber. As time went on, we realised a lot of our relationship was about exchanging work and ideas over the phone and posting small craft projects back and forth between Manchester and London. Log Cabin came about as a way of archiving all of these interactions. Rather than just having all these really lengthy phone calls that would disappear after we had them, we wanted to turn it into some sort of quilt or work that could keep growing. That's when Sarah Joy came up with the idea of Log Cabin. Like Sarah Joy said, we approach making work quite differently. But the log cabin has allowed us to unify these approaches. It's comforting to know that when we work together on a textile piece, that it's also strengthening the connection that we have with each other. At the moment, aside from working on the log cabin project, I'm working on a collection of clothes and accessories. 
more wearable art stuff. I'm thinking about materials like chainmail and high vis, how this can act as a protection against physical and verbal abuse. To wear slightly jazzier clothes when looking fabulous, you're putting yourself in danger of being approached by negativity, unfortunately. Questions like, how can you ensure that, as well as looking good, that you're also safe? This is something I find myself lingering on a lot. As well as my creative practice, I co-run a printing press called Page Masters. Here, I work with artists to create books, posters, prints and works of art. Our printers use environmentally friendly ink and we make sure to use only recycled or FSC certified papers. A really important part of our collaboration is friendship, which is the driving force in our making work together. Because it's really just about enjoying each other's company and wanting to spend time with someone else who is just as passionate about textiles. We actually met in 2015 when we were both on School of the Damned, which is an alternative postgraduate course run by students for the students through an anti-capitalist model. So it's a completely alternative art school. We both spotted each other in the first session and were immediately drawn to, to one another. Oh my God, there's another queer textiles person. <laughs> we immediately wanted to hang out and do stuff together. Before this, I never really collaborated with anyone. I've been a part of a collaborative cu of curatorial projects and part of a in my collective called Seas, where we ran group shows, but I never really made stuff properly with someone else. Our first collaboration was a res was at a residency in Hotel Elephant in South London. We didn't have enough time to make anything decent, but we still gave it a go. We made a terrible banner together. And we went back to Jordan's and set up the sewing machine and made this absolute monstrosity. And we stayed up all night making it. It was awful, but we had such a good time and we loved making together. A lot of the stuff that we were doing on School of Dam was totally scrappy and messy. But actually what we were doing was working out how to be together, how to collaborate, how to exist in an art world that is built against you and an education system that's also stacked against you and how to create a completely different way of making art and being together. And since then, we've been hanging out and making it work whenever possible. Nothing is defined. Sarah Joy might send me some work and then I'll work into it and send something back. We then might have a conversation about some shoes and all of a sudden the shoes end up being involved and become a pattern. The pattern gets printed on a quilt. Then we run that quilt under the embroiderer. But then again, if we push things too far and it becomes really horrendous, we can cut it up, stitch it back together, sew into it again and keep, keep pushing and not giving up on it. That's been our most effective method so far, to just not stop. It really reminds me of the best advice I ever got in art school that I've only recently thought about again. If it's too glittery or too much or too big or too small or whatever too much of that you think's making it shit, just do more of that. Like, go big or go home. Keep working on it. Keep expanding it. This is totally what we've done and I've learned so much through this collaboration. Coming from an academic background, I find my approach can be more tentative and meticulous and that sometimes I don't leave enough space for the beauty of queer chaos in my work. And that's really brought out for me by collaborating with Jordan. It allows for more open-endedness. I think sometimes these things feed you, but it's all about finding a balance between the two, taking what you need from each other and getting the heck out. Textiles are a really exciting medium to be working with in because they have this kind of marginalised history. So for me, I've always been really interested in women's histories of textile making and looking at how textiles and embroidery in particular were not considered high art or valuable in the same way as something like painting. This was really challenged by feminist arti artists in the 60s, 70s and 80s by people like Judy Chicago, Miriam Shapiro, Faith Wilding and Faith Ringgold. There was a real shift pushed by feminist textile artists to claim cloth as an important and exciting medium to work in. Reclaiming the skills and creative practices and languages that were developed by women in the domestic sphere that had been undervalued for so long. And this was a really radical act, bringing these textiles, these histories, domesticity into the gallery. And pretty much everything that I do and any other fine artist working with textiles is indebted to what those women did because it didn't do them any favours at the time. It was really difficult to try and make this shift into the gallery. 
And we can't imagine that now because it seems so easy, but at the time it was so controversial. And textiles were such an important space that gave women the materials and the possibility to talk about the issues and politics of womanhood. So this has really been important for a lot of different groups of marginalised artists because textiles have this particular history. It becomes really effective and exciting medium to talk about all kinds of marginalised identities and groups and to talk about issues that haven't been given the attention that they deserve. There's a lot of history of queer artists using textiles as well. One of the most important examples is the Names Project quote which is the largest community art project in the world. And it memorializes the people that lost their lives in the HIV and AIDS crisis. So that's a perfect example of how textiles can be this really powerful medium to talk about the really intimate and painful aspects of queer culture and also to celebrate and honor these people's lives. And the quilt is such a powerful place to do it because it signifies so much about the home, the bed, intimacy the domestic the body and this all links with ideas around care and love so textiles can really tap into that for anyone when you come across a textile in a gallery space you've got these bodily memories and ideas within you and we've all got memories of textiles and by working with that medium you can really tap into that so it can become really powerful and it's not thought about but textiles and cloth as a medium is the medium between yourself and the body the layer between yourself and the world that's always been there so it's a fundamental and foundational thing and cloth creates our culture in every way so it's such an exciting and rich medium for artists to work in not to mention how accessible it is as a medium at this point in time anything can be cut up and there is no shortage of clothes the biggest thing for me about textile is that anyone can get hold of some fabric and make something very quickly, especially with quilt making. A little goes a long way. It just takes a quick rummage through your wardrobe to find something to breathe life into. It's the thing that's right under our nose, staring right at us. This project isn't like how many of my other work works are. It's not about documenting or storytelling specific moments. It's about an interest and compulsion towards queer aesthetics and culture and an exploration of how these things materialise. Things like seeing you on the first day of School of the Damned, your clothes were signalling to me that we might be cut from a similar cloth and made me want to get closer. Essentially, you were screaming, I'm queer too, which was a huge relief in a new environment. In working together, we found we cannot escape fashion. It's almost impossible to get away from it. The point of this project was to give us a space to basically visualise and record and document materialising how the, all these conversations that we were having and so many of them have been about clothes and about fashion and the relationship with the queer body and cloth with this kind of interest in how we present ourselves and how we move about in the world how we read how we recognize each other through what we're wearing and our relationships with cloth so that's something that we said, the log cabin, the initial idea is that it keeps functioning. It's not just a project with a beginning and an end. So we're already thinking about, OK, where do we take this next? And these conversations about fashion and the body and queerness, that's the direction that we're hoping to explore more of. Ongoing and out of the log co cabin, turning it into other things. It's interesting to think that at the same time as placing cloth on the body, we are ripping it right off our backs and throwing it onto the internet the furthest it's ever been from us. Away from us, but strangely closer than ever. The Log Cabin Archive has the potential to outlive us, transforming into a new queer history, which is really exciting to think about. Over the past year since lockdown, we have been archiving all the things that we have sent to each other. On WhatsApp, through the post, we've just been putting it on our website. The idea was to create a never-ending mood board of ideas for potential artworks, creating a bank of imagery to grab from whenever we want to collaborate. Finished quilts are uploaded to our quilt gallery and we also have a section of work in progress screenshots and photographs from previous meetups, whether they be in person or online. This project will outlive any institutional timeframes as it subconsciously started when we first met and will continue into new avenues when the funding runs out. <laughs>